One thing I don't get about people that sign up people for all these therapies or educational things and promote it, parents, teachers, administrators, school offices, is how they promote it without being, how they promote it and listen to people that can't explain what they're doing. And I mean therapists that say, oh, I treat autistic who the PBIS um, school of blah, 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 which is the actual methods and with the small multiple schools, which is very, very harmful. Or I use um, this method based on this guy or this guy, and they give them all these big fancy words. And when you ask for a simple explanation of what they do, they don't do it. Or, says, or there's programs that promote that the officer promoting the program can't even tell you what they do in the program for education, for therapies, and everything. And the thing about that is then you can replace, if someone's doing something like that, you can replace it with someone that has no idea what they're talking about, but knows the language, and they can promote the program. It doesn't mean the program's good. But what's even more concerning when it comes to education and stuff like that is that education is based on teaching someone. If you can't explain to people how you're teaching about your method and about where, why it should work in a logical way, then your teaching method, then you can't teach. You simply can't teach and explain. That doesn't mean there isn't big fancy terminology, there isn't a lot of stuff to learn, but can you take that big fancy terminology and break it down to simple things? You might know 5,000 different methods. You don't, they're not saying that you explain each method, but you should be able to explain one out of the 5,000 methods in a period of time that you're doing. You might explain your general approach. A teacher should be able to explain stuff clearly. The same as with a therapist. Because what a therapist is trying to do is teach emotional skills, language skills, or they're trying to teach motor skills or other skills. If they can explain their approach to a variety of people easily, and I really do mean easily, they're not good. And that's what you have to look out for. Now, if the approach sounds super complicated and stuff and doesn't make sense, that's also not good because Again, if it's overly complicated, it might just be false or weird, but it also means it's much more likely to overload a person. And there's also a lot of studies that people look at for education that are just not good with therapy. Either they do it on a very small sample size, okay, but people very wide, very so much on the, the same person very so much under different circumstances, at different ages and stuff, so it might not be relevant, even for a person it might be dependent. It might be also dependent very much on the sample because people are so varied that's hard to get a good representative sample of people. It then you have ones where you can temporarily boost ones in certain tests and stuff, but do they retain the knowledge ten years down the thing? Does it destroy the inner motivation? Does it come at the expense of the health? Could, are you, you sucking up all the time teaching them concept A and taking away their life? So yes, I could make a study. If I made a math class, only class taught in high school, math scores would go way up properly. However, they wouldn't know English, they wouldn't know anything else. Same as if I deal with English or any subject. You can make the system work better for 90% of the kids, but then flunks out 5% of the kids. But then you look at the system and say, oh, an average increased it, so it must work for everybody. That's because you're looking at averages, where a more flexible program might work better for everybody. And maybe there's a program that doesn't force kids as hard to succeed in a classroom or something, so kids' scores go down. But some kids benefit more that are actually interested and passionate about it, and other kids have more free time to do other things they like where they have passion, or those kids don't have as best good score, but they're more creative in the post and they're more okay with failing or something like that, and they didn't just memorize the textbook and get burnt out. Maybe their emotional health is better. And all these things with education that the studies, just, just be careful about the studies and statistics and how they compare groups. Another thing is to realize that for a lot of, because in the education and therapy industry, they're looking at people that people 
want to change already. And they, it's very easy to feel, Mongo, that your child is way behind and is never going to do well in life, blah, 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 blah. So it's very easy to play victim on these people. And then you can think of them when you hear 10 years of experience and if you're failing and everything, that there must be something wrong with you or something, which means that you need an expert. And then they can give you something to talk on, they don't understand even more or feel like you have to overdo everything. Which just makes the whole industry even more predatory. Well, thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers in a year and 4,000 watch hours, which is really hard, but with your help, I think I can do it. Also, if you have any idea for future videos, comments, or suggestions, or anything at all, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much again.